Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce some more vocabulary about secants and tangents and how they relate to circles. Uh, we'll talk about radii that are drawn to tangent points. I'll talk about the two tangent theorem. And then we'll do a couple sample problems uh, implementing what we call the common tangent procedure and a walk around, or what we call a walk around problem. So our first definition is that of a secant, and a secant is a line that intersects a circle at exactly two points. And the secant has an external part, which is the part outside of the circle. So here's your external part of the secant, and it also has an internal part, and that's the part of the secant that's inside the circle. So secant here it can be a line or a ray or a segment, but it's going to cut through the circle and intersect it at exactly two points. A little bit different than a chord because it does have an external portion where a chord is just from one side of the circle to the other and it's totally inside the circle. So the internal part of the secant would be considered a chord. A tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. That point is the point of tangency or the tangent point or the point of contact. So right where our line just skims the circle, that's the tangent point or the point of contact. So it's got a diff few different names, but essentially the tangent point. And we've seen tangent in trig, and this is related to that. Um, and you'll see that as you further explore your math studies. A tangent line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. So here's an example again of a tangent line, and we have our tangent point. And if we draw a line from the center of a circle to that point of tangency, that will always form a right angle. So it's always perpendicular. So radius is perpendicular to a tangent line at the point of contact. Okay, Very important concept for us. So we're going to be drawing radii to points of contact, and the reason we do that is because we're going to want that right angle. And if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then those two segments are congruent. You can just shorten this to the two tangent theorem. You might use that as a reason and a proof, the two tangent theorem. And what we're essentially doing here with the two tangent theorem two tangent theorem is we're saying that AB and AC that those two segments are congruent by the two tangent theorem and that's actually fairly easy to prove you know if we draw radii to the points of contact well those radii are going to be congruent and we have right angles and if we insert an auxiliary line to point A, that line is reflexive. This is also the hypotenuse, it's opposite the right angle. So these two triangles are congruent by HL, which would then make AC congruent to AB by CPCTC. So there is a real quick and easy proof of the two tangent theorem and why two tangent segments drawn to a circle from an external point are going to be congruent because essentially we're going to we can split that into congruent triangles and then use CPCTC. Some work with circles. Circles can be internally tangent or circles can be externally tangent. So I have one circle inside of the other and they have an internal tangent point where here on the right hand side these circles are externally tangent. 
one circle is outside of the other. So we have an external tangent point. And circles can share a common internal tangent and a common external tangent. And a common internal tangent, I remember that by recognizing that an internal tangent is going to have to cut between a line between the centers of the circles. So this tangent is internal. I would say something like AB is internal tangent and XY is an external tangent. I just remember the internal tangent. It's internal. It cuts between the two circles, where an external tangent kind of stays on the outside, or external. The common tangent procedure, this is a procedure we're going to do with solve types of problems. You're going to have to kind of memorize this and understand how to apply this. But with the common tangent procedure, we need to draw a segment joining the centers of the circles. We'll need to draw radii to the points of contact. So these are tangent points or tangent points. Well, why do we draw radii to points of contact? Well, we get right angles. And then since we're working with two circles, we're going to draw lines from the center of the smaller circle parallel to our common tangent. That will become more clear when we do our sample problem. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a right triangle and a rectangle. And we're going to use the properties of a right triangle and a rectangle to answer our question. So let's move on to our sample problem using the common tangent procedure. So our common tangent procedure might look something like this. Problem might ask, a circle with a radius of 8 is externally tangent to a circle with a radius 18. So we have two different circles. We've got a small circle and a large circle. They have different radii. And we want to find the length of the common external tangent. And in this sample problem, our common external tangent is AB. We want to find the length of AB. So we're going to use our common tangent procedure. And earlier in your notes, we had the common tangent procedure written out, but we'll do this again. We want to draw radii to the points of contact. So we're drawing radii to the point of contact. Now, why do we want to do that? Why do we want to draw a segment from Q to A and P to B. Well, we should remember earlier from our notes, if we draw a radius to a tangent point, we get a right angle. And that's going to be important for us. Then we want to draw a segment joining the centers of the two circles. Okay. Should fill in the length of our radii here, the small circle at a radius of 8. And the large circle had a radius of 18. Well, it's not as simple as saying 18 plus 8 is, is 26 and AB is 26. This looks like a rectangle, but it clearly is not because AQ is 10 units longer than PB is. So we can't simply say, you know, that eight, the 18, the radii 18 plus 8 is 26. That's how long AB is. So we drew our segment joining, joining the centers of the circles, and yes, that is 26 units long. Now here's the important thing. From the center of the smaller circle, always from the center of the smaller circle, draw a segment parallel to the common tangent. So parallel to the common tangent. So when I start here at P, I am eight units away from my common tangent. And as I come across, I'm still eight units because remember these lines have to be parallel. So I'm still eight away. I'm eight away 
I'm 8 away. So now the top portion of this is 8. And doing a little subtraction, the bottom portion is 10. Well, up here I have a rectangle. I drew this parallel. I have sides of 8 and 8. These are parallel. This is a rectangle. Got my right angles. So on the bottom, though, I have a right triangle. QP. X is a right triangle. Well, we may recognize the numbers here, 10, 26. This is a 5 something 13. XP is 12 units long, because we got ourselves a 5, 12, 13 times 2. So that is 12. So my rectangle, using my properties of a rectangle, AB must be 12. So, using the common tangent procedure, I created a rectangle up here, used my properties of right triangle, and I got my answer of, it's not 12, I beg your pardon, it's 24. I forgot to expand out my 5, 12, 13. So it's 10, 24, 26. A good example of common error, we forgot to double that, so... My common tangent, AB, is 24 units long. Next up, we will look at a walk-around problem. The next kind of problem you're going to see in this section is the walk-around problem. And the reason we call it a walk-around problem is because you're going to start on one side of the problem and walk or work your way all the way around the problem in one direction until you get back to the start again. So you can walk around either clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's important that you simply walk in the same direction and not backtrack. You'll find things a little bit easier. So in my notes down here it says, Walk around in one direction until you arrive back at the start. So that's what we're going to do with this particular question. So each side of a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, is tangent to the circle. So I've got my black quadrilateral, my four-sided figure here, and I have a circle that's inscribed inside of there. And it's tangent at each one of these points. Well, that means that B to our tangent points or C to our tangent points, we've got the two tangent theorem going on here. That means all of these are going to be equal. Uh, if I label these um, W, X, Y, and Z, you know, DW is congruent to DX. AX is congruent to AY. BY is congruent to BZ because of the two tangent theorem. And that's going to help us out quite a bit. So we're given that AB is 10 and BC is 15 um, and AD is 18. And we want to find length CD. So well, how are we going to do that? I, I'm going to want to see algebra. I'm going to want to see your work here. Um, and in a problem like this, we will use the two tangent theorem. Uh, in general, though, on these kinds of problems, uh, we might use properties of radii um, to help us, but we don't have radii here. Uh, this isn't that kind of problem. So let's go ahead and do our walk around. We want to find CD. I want to find out how long that is. So I'm, I could start, you know, up here at at uh, like CW and walk counterclockwise. I'm going to start here at DW though and walk clockwise. And I'm going to let my unknown be one of these that's part of CD. And that's going to be really helpful for us. So I'm going to say DW is some length X. So DX is also some length X by the two tangents. 
Well, AD is 18 units long. I've used X units, so A, well, my blue X is 18 minus X. That's how long that is. X plus 18 minus X is 18, so that's 18 minus X. Well, by the two tangent theorem, AY is also 18 minus X. BY, well, doing the same kind of concept, BA is 10. We've used 18 minus X of those units, so BY would be 10 minus the quantity 18 minus X, and that quantity is important. So your algebra, 10 minus 18 plus X, so simplifying, that becomes X minus 8. So BY is the same as BZ, is x minus 8. And again, the same concept. BC all the way across is 15 units. BZ is x minus 8 of those units. I've used x minus 8 units. So B, pardon me, ZC is 15 minus the quantity x minus 8 walking all the way around my problem here. So that's 15 minus x plus 8, which becomes, uh, well, that'd be 23 minus x. 15 plus 8 is 23. So CZ is 23 minus x. So CW here, the top part, is also 23 minus x by the two tangent theorem. So now I look at CD, and length CD is made up of the top part, CW, which is 23 minus X, that was CW, and then WD is X, and 23 minus X plus X equals 23. So... CD is 23. Interesting problem. I never did find out what X was. Didn't have to in this particular problem. It ended up coming out in the wash when I did my walk around, um, mostly because I chose well. But I found my answer. CD is 23. Notice how we started with some value X and we walked all the way around in the same direction and in doing so, that really made our problem a lot easier to solve. We'll get more practice on these when I see you in class.